Hello, procrastinator Sam here, and today I want to talk about this interview that Game Informer had with the head of Sonic Team, Takashi Izuka. The reason why I want to talk about this interview is because I feel like, you know, as Sonic fans, we don't really get to see these type of interviews happen a whole lot. It happens once in a blue moon, maybe once every three or four years, where we get to have an interview with Takashi Izuka and see, you know, what he's feeling, what he's thinking for the future of Sonic the Hedgehog. And I think this interview is really important because he talks about a lot of upcoming major projects for Sonic the Hedgehog, including, you know, Sonic Origins, uh, Sonic Colors Ultimate, and yes, the next mainline Sonic game Sonic Rangers or what's expected to be the name of the next mainline Sonic game Sonic Rangers. So with that said let's go through this entire interview together and I will give you guys my thoughts in between. So let's go. Game Informer asks what does it mean for you for the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise to reach the 30th anniversary milestone? Izuka responds, For the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise, it means we have reached the turning point where we have to connect across generations. The generation in their teens who played Sonic the Hedgehog on their Sega Genesis would have children in their teens now. Perhaps they are playing Sonic games together, or telling their kids about playing Sonic when they were their age. Sort of like passing the torch to the next generation. Also, for me personally, getting to work with creators who grew up loving Sonic, like Christian Whitehead who worked on Sonic Mania, or Tyson Hess who worked on the animated shorts and has been very proactive. And I think that is great that Azuka understands, you know, you know where we are as fans, you know, how long the series has gone. I know this is something that's so minute. Like, of course, you're going to know how long it's going on for. But to understand the side effects of a long running series, to understand, you know, the people you have to target. Now you are targeting both adults and kids uh, that, you know, adults that grew up with Sonic the Hedgehog and the Sega Genesis who now have kids of their own or, you know, they're just older and they, you know, are more mature. He definitely has that mindset where he wants to cater to both audiences, and I think that is ideal. You know, for a lot of, you know, long-running series like Mario, for example, I adore the Mario series for how they're able to cater to both adults and kids without alienating, you know, each other. And I think that's something Sonic the Hedgehog, the franchise, really needs to do better of, especially when it comes to the writing. I know when it comes to the writing, it feels like they alienate a lot of us older fans because it feels like they just cater to just the kids. But I feel like Sonic could get a bit of both. So to see Azuka understand that you have fans such for such a long-running series, you have fans who have been there since the very beginning who are now full-grown adults who have kids of their own now so to cater to both it is best for the series to not alienate uh the older fans or to not alienate the younger fans to just make a great franchise that caters to all and i think it's great that he mentioned you know christian whitehead and tyson hess you know fans who lost not the hedgehog who got to work with them officially i'm sure for azuka it probably reminded him of when he started to work at Sonic the hedgehog being you know young blood you know in the industry working for the game series and now watching people new young blood working in the series and it probably makes him really happy to see that you know fans are now at a point where they could actually influence the series themselves anyways let's continue game informer asks when looking at ways to celebrate the anniversary what were the things you really wanted to make sure happened azuka responds for me Anniversaries have always been a time to celebrate and appreciate the fans. In past years, this would have meant holding events all over the world and getting to meet and interact with fans from many different countries. But with the current state of things, we can't really do that. So we will think of other ways to present something that will really make everyone happy like the upcoming Sonic Symphony. And I have to say, I am super hyped for Sonic Symphony uh, on Sonic's birthday on June 23rd. So uh, I will definitely be doing a live stream for that because again, I love Sonic the Hedgehog music and I especially love the symphonic sound when it comes to video games. So yes, I will definitely be doing a live stream to that. Make sure you guys hit the sub button and hit the bell so you guys know when I go live and you guys stay tuned. So when we go live, we could watch that concert together. Game Informer continued, when I spoke with you at E3 2019, you told me that 2021 would be the next big year for Sonic. As you alluded to, a lot has happened to the world since there. While you were still able to make a bunch of announcements, did the pandemic affect your plans? Izuka responded, To be honest, I would be lying if I said the pandemic didn't affect our plans at all. We have been working from home at Sega of America since March of 2020, and while we have been effective at working from home, it did impact our plans. But we are not letting that stop us from executing on things as best as we can and have this be a memorable 30th anniversary for our fans. And that's great. I know a lot of fans, you know, uh, were kind of cynical when it comes to the whole pandemic thing because they saw other game publishers, you know, that were able to release games, you know, during the pandemic. And what people need to understand, though, is those games were probably well into de development way before the pandemic, uh, you know, happened. And for Sonic the Hedgehog, when they started their uh, development in 2019, I believe, is when they said it in South by Southwest. Um you know, that would have been maybe a year of development. And then early 2020, we started the pandemic and people were really cynical towards Sega, like, oh, you guys, you know, should be able to still do stuff during the pandemic and this and that. 
I think it's super cynical to say that. As a person from the outside, we don't have a right to say that you don't know what it's like to make games, you don't know what it's like to work from home and make games. So I feel like it's not right for us to really put our hat into the ring and say what they should or shouldn't have done. Uh, and that was my stance all along. And I'm happy to see that Azuka was still able to get an announcement this year, even though we didn't really see a major release on the 30th anniversary. And I don't know why people are complaining about that. I feel like it's been like that for a while now. We haven't really gotten a whole lot of releases on the anniversaries. We get the announcements on the anniversaries and then the game would come out sometime later. That happened for Sonic Forces and Sonic Mania for a matter of fact. But I am happy to hear that they are, you know, hell bent on making sure that everything is gonna be good. Uh, no matter, you know, how much the pandemic has affected them or delayed their plans, that they are still gonna be, you know, executing things perfectly and to make sure that things get done when they need to get done. The interviewer asks, pivoting to the announcements you made, why do you think now is a good time for Sonic Colors to arrive on modern platforms. While this may be fresh in everyone's memory, last year we saw the release and hit of Sonic the Hedgehog in movie theaters. As a result, many people who have never played a Sonic game before were introduced to our charismatic character. I had anticipated this and wanted to deliver a title that would be a quintessentially Sonic title for those new people to experience. That title was Sonic Colors, which could not be played on any of the current platforms and was why I wanted to bring it to modern platforms. And that is also something that I did say in my other videos as to why they chose Sonic Colors to remake. I know at first, especially for a lot of people, including myself, I did think myself, you know, why Sonic Colors of all games? I feel like there was other games out there that probably would have gotten more attention first to, you know, bring back to port to remake uh, before Colors. But I did say in the eyes of Sega, it did make sense. You know, that was the one game that was also reviewed well publicly, not just in the Sonic fans, but publicly. I know, you know, the thoughts of the game has changed over time. Um, you know, many things do change over time, but I still think, you know, personally for me, I don't hate Colors. I think Colors is a, is a pretty decent, you know, game. Uh, you know, it is not as jarring as Forces was in terms of a lot of its flaws. And I still think Colors did deserve to be, you know, reported again. Uh, I just think, you know, there is a lot of other titles that could also bring a really good first impression for new fans as well. Uh, but I do understand why they chose Sonic Colors. And again, I'm happy they're doing that. And if this does well, I'm sure Sega will then start porting more of Sonic's old 3D platforms. And I hope they do that. And uh, let's we'll see what happens. And I asked this before, but I want to ask it again. What do you guys think about Sonic Colors getting ported again? Do you guys think it was a great idea? Or do you guys think there was a better 3D game to bring back and remaster for the sake of new fans? Anyways, let's continue. Game Informer asks, can you tell us anything about what to expect with the Sonic Origins collection? I know a lot of fans who have been with the series as long as I have and are going to be anticipating that one. Azuka responds, we have released these titles many times in the past running on emulators, but seeing that 4x3 screen ratio on modern 16x9 displays feels very retro. The concept behind Sonic Origins is to make these four legendary titles feel more modern. Of course, this means displaying the title in the full 16x9 screen format of modern displays. We still have time before this title releases, so I can't really get into details yet, but I believe this will be a title that not only first time players will enjoy, but also core fans. And I am so happy to hear that. That is something I've been advocating for for such a long time. In fact, I feel like I'm one of the loudest ones in the community that have been advocating for these games to be ported in 16x9. Just the Christian Whitehead ports on modern consoles. You guys already made the ports, just put them on the consoles. And especially to port Sonic 3 again. And again, I, I know people didn't notice this because in the Sonic Central live stream, they showed Sonic 3 in a four by three ratio, but it will end up actually being 16 by nine. I'm happy to hear that. And again, for those new Sonic fans that came from the Sonic movie that probably wanna see where the series started, I think having Sonic Origins is a great way to get them introduced to the series. Game Informer continues, I've been telling people that the recent Sega Ages versions of Sonic 1 and 2 on Switch are the best ways to play those games today thanks to all the enhancements. Okay, so this guy clearly didn't play the Christian Wyatt ports of those games. Do you think these new Sonic Origins versions will be able to rival or surpass those versions as the best way to experience those classic games? Which is a good question. I do want to know what they will be adding to those ports. Uh, Azuka responds, I am glad you like the Sega Ages versions of Sonic 1 and 2. There are a lot of original features and game modes that we put in there exclusively. So if people haven't played it yet, they should give it a go. However, Sonic Origins will have features that not even the Sega Ages versions have. Not only will the playable game area be in the 16x9 format, but it will be a multiple platform release of titles containing Sonic 1, 2, 3 and & Knuckles and CD. 
look forward to hearing a lot more announcements about Sonic Origins in the near future. Now, this was actually a pretty dang good question because uh, I don't know if Sega realized this or not, but uh, especially with, you know, things like Sonic 3 Air, which is a great way to play Sonic 3. It's actually the definitive version right now to play Sonic 3 and Knuckles, the full game, because it's 16 by 9, is essentially the unreleased, it's essentially, if Christian White had worked on Sonic 3, that is what Sonic 3 Air is, and it probably is even more than that. It has so many features. I hope hope Sega realizes what they're up against and I hope they see you know ports and, and mods like that and they probably take some inspiration from them for themselves you know add different sprite works add different you know maybe we could turn on the prototype music have the original music as well maybe you know have achievements stuff like that I think that stuff is really cool that Sonic 3 Air had and along with all the other stuff and I think adding them to the ports would be a great idea. And again, I'm so happy they're actually re-releasing these titles properly because I don't know if you guys remember the Twitter AMA with Ivo Gerskovic. Uh, I actually asked him about, you know, these ports for these games and he was actually, he actually responded to me and, and said, you know, he's happy to see that, you know, we have interest in these ports. And, you know, I'm happy they actually ended up, you know, going forward with that plan and actually releasing them based off feedback they got. I am super happy for it. And again, stay tuned to the channel. When Sonic Origins comes out, I'll stream it, I'll review it so make sure you guys you know stay tuned to the channel we'll see what how the games are and i'll let you know if you guys should pick it up or not but considering it is going to be a 16 by 9 format of those games you should probably pick it up anyways because this is probably the best legal way to play them the game informer interviewer continues speaking of sonic 3 and knuckles it's been a long time since we've seen the re-release of that game as someone who was integral to the development of that original title, how does it feel to bring it back to market for the first time in so long? That is a great question. Izuka responds, I think a lot of fans really appreciate the news that we will include Sonic 3 & Knuckles in Sonic Origins, but I think I am the most excited out of everyone. It was the first Sonic title that I worked on, and it is a title that is really close to my heart. So having that chance to re-release this title after decades is something I am really looking forward to. As the development of the title is currently progressing, every time I see the Sonic 3 and Knuckles data, I'm reminded of all the hard work and excitement I had when I was younger making that title. It really brings back a lot of memories for me. I think this question was really good, and I really think it is so sweet to see Azuka be so excited for Sonic 3 and Knuckles, you know, re-releasing. First off, it is a game I've been advocating for for a long time. It's one of my favorite 2D Sonic games. Uh, you know, it is such a great title. It is such a long title. It's a big, beautiful package, and the fact that we haven't had it in so long is a crime. Uh, but I'm happy that Azuka, you know, is just as excited, you know, as anyone. And it goes to show that he wanted this title to be re-released a long time ago, but he clearly couldn't due to legal reasons or whatever uh but i'm happy to see him being so excited about it and i wish he would talk more about his experience working on older titles i feel like we don't see that a whole lot we don't get a whole lot of insight to what it was like for azuka or anyone you know working on the older titles back then i wish he would talk about it more i really want to know more about this type of stuff so i hope it does this more in the future but again great question i'm happy to hear that he's excited for Sonic 3 to come out and i'm excited for it too all right, now we get to some of the really good stuff. After Sonic Forces, many fans have been curious about what the next Sonic game from Sonic Team will be like. Now that it is officially announced, can you give any details about the kind of gameplay that they should expect from the new game? Uzuka responds, Thank you for being so patient. Ever since the release of Sonic Forces, Sonic Team in Japan was trying many different approaches to deliver the next-gen Sonic experience. While celebrating 30 years of Sonic titles and thinking about what the modern gameplay experience should be for a Sonic title, we also needed to think about what path forward we should plan to take for the next decade. There is a lot we can't talk about yet, but we are working hard on the title. We look forward to sharing more information about this title in the future. So we didn't get a whole lot of information there, but I think it is interesting to hear their planning process that they're not just thinking about the next title, their next two titles, they're thinking about the next decade for Sonic the Hedgehog, where they want to go for the direction of the series. And I think that is good planning on their part. I think that is a good idea for them to have a roadmap for the far future. And, you know, I'm sure things will change along the way, but it's good that they have a clear roadmap for the far future. Future. And it's good to hear that they are work, been working hard to deliver a next gen experience, not just a next Sonic title, but a next generation Sonic title. And I think that is good. I think, you know, getting that next step forward, like Unleashed was after 06, for example, I think getting that next gen experience is good for Sonic the Hedgehog, especially now because the series, in my opinion, started to get a bit stale, especially after Sonic Forces, because, you know, the boost formula has been done to death. 
and we'll see what happens. And after reading this, what comes to mind for me is ambition. It sounds like they really want to make an ambitious title for the next time around. And that goes in line with the, the leaks that we've been seeing that they are making an open world Sonic game, something that a Sonic game has never done before. And they want to do something out of the box. I think that's good. Again, it all comes out to execution at the end of the day, but I think it is good that they have a super ambitious title on their hands and we'll see what happens regarding, you know, the next gen Sonic game or what we know to be as Sonic Rangers. The Game Informer interviewer asks, are there any particular things you hope to accomplish with the new game? What lessons did the team learn from games like Sonic Generations and Sonic Forces that will be implemented into the title? Now that is a really good question. Azuka responds, there is a lot I can't say yet about the title, but I do believe we will see an advancement in what a modern Sonic game can be. Of course, we will not deny the high speed action that characterized previous modern Sonic games like Sonic Generations or Sonic Forces. That, that actually hurt to read. Rather, we will create a title that our current gaming fans and new gamers will enjoy. Well, that's great to hear that, you know, he really wants to, again, make something that is ambitious in the next advancement for Sonic's playset in a modern form. I do like that. Um, <laughs> what's a little scary, though, is he's it sounds like he thinks that there was a lot of people and I'm sure there was, but I, I think the grand majority did not find a good amount of high speed action that was characterized in Sonic Forces. I'm actually surprised he mentioned Sonic Forces. But again, that's just wording. I'm not too worried about it at this time. But again, stay tuned to the channel and you know we will cover all advancements for Sonic Rangers and the next mainland Sonic game and we will see how it goes. And now we have the final question from Game Informer. They ask, as you look back at its first 30 years, what do you feel the biggest accomplishments of the Sonic franchise and how do you hope to make the next 30 years even better? That is a really, really good question. This is what Azuka had to say. He said, we have had many key points in the past 30 years of Sonic's history. Of course, the first turning point would be the success of the Genesis. That has to be the greatest achievement of them all. Because of that success, we launched an animated show, comic books, and many other forms of media. The next big key point was the transition from 2D gameplay to 3D gameplay with the Sonic Adventure series. We were able to recreate the thrills and sensations from the 2D side-scrolling games in a 3D environment, which was the foundation of the current Sonic games. I just want to interject real quick that I couldn't agree more with what Azuka said about the Sonic Adventure series. Hey, maybe we should bring it back. Anyways, Azuka responded, the next big key point came last year and it wasn't related to the games, but rather the release of the hit movie. With the release of the movie, I could feel everyone immediately recognizing Sonic. If we look back at the historical accomplishments, we could see that both the advancements of the games as well as the expansion of the media have led us to such a successful achievement. I will focus on those two very important points as we move forward to the next 30 year milestone. And that was the interview. And I have to say, I love where it ended off there because I've been saying this for such a long time now. What the Sonic movie did for the brand is such an amazing thing because if it's done anything, it showed Sega that Sonic can be a super successful IP if it is treated correctly. There was a bit of fear I had, especially right after Sonic Forces or during Sonic Forces, that Sega didn't see Sonic as a super successful IP anymore and they didn't want to pump a whole lot of money into it. That's why I feel like we were getting those budget titles and that's why I feel like they were putting more attention on games like their Yakuza series, which is very successful and is giving Sega a lot of money. And for those that don't know, Sega is doing very well right now in the gaming landscape and Sonic is not a huge part of that right now. It has been, Sonic does, does sell a lot for them, but they are doing great outside of Sonic as well. And I had a fear that Sega realized that they probably don't need Sonic a whole lot anymore. They weren't going to put a whole lot of focus onto it. But after the movie, and I'm happy Sega noticed this, especially Takashi Zuko noticed just how many people recognize Sonic, how many people cared about Sonic, especially during that whole redesign controversy thing. That news was everywhere. Everyone wanted that redesign to happen. They wanted Sonic to be taken care of. They didn't want the, the face of the brand to be tarnished. So I am so happy to see that Sega understands that and they see that you know this is something that could be successful as long as it's treated right and people want it to succeed and that is something i've also mentioned in past videos but it always made me curious on what sega will do after the sonic movie they can't have another budget title the next game has to be a really good first impression not only just for fans but for also the new fans that came from the movie those casual players the people that have not played a whole lot of sonic games before but knew of the character to get introduced to the series from the movie and then to jump into the games we need a really good first impression. And that's why I like the idea of the next Sonic game being an ambitious one, because I think they needed to be ambitious. I'm sick of Sonic Team, you know, playing it safe. I think having an ambitious title, a big title, is a great idea. Again, as long as it is executed well, of course, we'll have to see what happens. But I am 
looking forward to what they're doing with the future of Sonic because it does seem like they do recognize and they realize the importance of this brand again. And again, I'm happy to see that in this interview, they're not thinking of the short term. They're thinking of the long term, the next decade, the next 30 years. They're thinking long term where they want the series to go, how they want it to succeed. And they also realize how successful Sonic is, not just as, you know, a gaming mascot, but also in other medias. I mean, think about it. This is something that not even Mario has been able to really accomplish yet, but to escape from just being a video game character, but to also be uh, around in other medias like TV shows, movies, you know, music. And that's a good thing because I want Sonic to grow. I want him to really flourish and I want him to be as successful as he can as an IP. You know, I feel like Sonic has always had that roller coaster ride, but I really want that roller coaster to just go up and to just stabilize, be good and stay good, you know? And I think to do that is to have it really grow, to have it go just be on video games, have it just be successful all around. And I'm happy that Sega is doing that as well. Of course, the video games will always be the bread and butter of the series. And I have a firm belief of that because that is what it is. And it is a video game series first, but I am happy to see that they see that there's so much potential for this amazing character to go beyond that. And I cannot wait to see what the future holds for Santa Hedgehog with this in mind. This interview as a whole is really good. And I have to give a huge shout out to Brian Chia. I hope I said your last name right. But Brian, who was the interviewer, you did a great job. You asked great questions. A good amount of hard hitting ones too, without, you know, coming off as, you know, rude. But you did a lot of good stuff there. You got a lot of uh, things, uh, you know, answered for us in terms of Azuka's mindset, Sonic Team's mindset going forward. And again, it confirmed a lot of the things that we've heard with all these leaks is that they're going for ambition ambitious ambitious titles no longer be doing safe titles let's go for those ambitious titles let's grow sonic as a brand and what i'm happy is that this interview also again showcased how important the sonic movie was to the brand and really showed me and confirmed to us that sega did take notes on how successful that movie was and it was probably like a oh crap like our brand could really rack in that much money yes it can just Give it the quality it deserves and it will flourish. With that said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, I, I'm really happy we're able to go over interviews like this. And I hope Azuka continues to do more interviews, especially uh, throughout the 30th anniversary period, but also in the future. I want to see more interviews. I want to get more into the mindset of Sonic Team because I feel like when we know the people working at hand, we know their mindset, we're able to give proper feedback to them and we could, again, have that vice versa conversation and that way none of us feel lost. Especially during the course of this whole pandemic thing and people feeling like, you know, they were left in the dust and that, you know, Sonic Team was taking forever and all this stuff. I think communication is key here and I think that is something Azuka should do more of and I can't wait to see what the future holds for Sonic the Hedgehog and I'm happy he was able to clarify some of his points in this interview. Thank you guys again for watching this video. Make sure you guys stay tuned. I will be doing a live stream for the Nintendo Direct coming soon. And again, I will be doing a live stream for Sonic's birthday for the Sonic Symphony. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Hit the sub button, hit the bell so that you guys uh, stay up to date to when I upload. And I appreciate all the support, guys. You guys have been fantastic. I love you guys so much. And I am so excited for the future of Sonic the Hedgehog. With all that said, this is Sam signing out. See you later, Procrastinator. <laughs>